Step into a world frozen in time where history whispers secrets through its magnificent architecture and intricate designs. Welcome to a journey through the enchanting city of Fatehpur Sikri where every stone tells a story and every corner holds a mystery. Join us as we unlock the hidden treasure of this UNESCO World Heritage Site and embark on a captivating adventure through the past. Fatehpur Sikri was established by Mughal Emperor Akbar in 1569. The city's name Fatehpur Sikri translates to City of Victory commemorating Akbar's successful military campaigns against the Rajput rulers of the area. The city was strategically located on the ridge of a hill providing natural defenses and panoramic views of the surrounding regions. It was also well connected to major cities like Agra, Delhi and Jaipur making it an ideal choice for a capital city. Fatehpur Sikri is renowned for its stunning architectural complexes, a fusion of Persian, Indian and Islamic architectural styles. So buckle up guys and subscribe to our channel as we explore the mystical courtyards, awe-inspiring architecture and untold stories that make this UNESCO World Heritage Site an absolute treasure trove of history and wonder. We started our journey to Fatehpur Sikri from Lucknow. It's approximately at a distance of 375 kilometers and driving through Agra Lucknow Expressway was an absolute pleasure. Here you can see the most famous attractions of Fatehpur Sikri and plan your day accordingly. The Bulant Darwaza or the Gate of Magnificence is one of the most impressive architecture marvels in Fatehpur Sikri. Emperor Akbar ordered the construction of Bulant Darwaza in 1576 to commemorate his victory over Gujarat. This grand entrance gate stands at a remarkable height of 54 meters and is made primarily of red sandstone with white marble embellishments. The gate is adorned with inscriptions from Quran and it also symbolizes grandeur of Mughal Empire. The white marble tomb was built in honor of Sufi saint Sheikh Salim Chishti who lived during the reign of Akbar. The construction of the tomb began in 1580 and it took approximately 15 years to complete. It is said that Emperor Akbar who had sought the saint's blessing for an heir was blessed with son who later became Emperor Jahangir. The tomb attracts pilgrims and visitors from various faiths who seek blessings and offer prayers at the shrine. The Jama Masjid in Fatihpur Sikri is a significant religious and architectural site. Built between 1571 and 72, during the reign of Akbar, the Jama Masjid was one of the largest mosques in India. The mosque's main prayer hall is so vast that it can accommodate thousands of worshippers. The prayer niche inside the mosque is intricately decorated and faces Mecca, a focal point for Muslim prayers. The Masjid has been a place of worship for centuries and continues to be a significant religious site today. Jodhabai Palace, also known as Maryam Uz Zamani Palace, is a key attraction within the historical complex of Fatehpur Sikri. It was constructed during the reign of Emperor Akbar in 16th century. She was the Rajput Princess of Amir and the wife of Akbar. The palace was built in her honor. It reflects a unique fusion of Rajput and Mughal architectural style showcasing multicultural ethos of Akbar's court. The palace is primarily constructed using red sandstone, a hallmark of Mughal architecture. Like many Mughal structures, Jodhabai Palace features a central courtyard which was a common architectural element to provide ventilation, natural light and sense of space. Diwani Khas is a significant architectural gem within the historical complex of Fatehpur Sikri and it was constructed in late 16th century. Its unique name translates to Hall of Private Audiences served as a place where Emperor Akbar held private meetings and discussions with his advisors, nobles and selected guests. The hall is renowned for its central pillar which is intricately carved and features a unique capital known as Hiran Minar or Elephant Tower. This pillar served as a focal point of the hall and it is said that the Akbar would sit on the elevated platform atop this pillar during these discussions. The hall's design and ornamentations are distinctive, reflecting Akbar's innovative approach to architecture and governance. It is also adorned with a stunning floral and geometric patterns reflecting exquisite craftsmanship of Mughal era. Panch Mahal, also known as the Palace of Five Stories. It served multiple purposes including a pleasure palace, a place for relaxation and entertainment and as a vantage point for ladies of royal home to view the city below. Panch Mahal stands out due to its unique and open pillared architectural design. It consists of several levels of 176 pillared colonnades that gradually decrease in size as you ascend, creating a stunning visual effect. 
The pillars and arches of Panch Mahal are adorned with intricate carvings and patterns reflecting artistic prowess of Mughal craftsmen. Anup Talao is a historic stepwell located within the complex. It was a prominent water reservoir and also played a role in musical performances during Akbar's time. It is octagonal in shape and is surrounded by an arched pavilion on all the sides. This pavilion served as a place of relaxation and entertainment for royal court and the emperor. In the middle of the Anup Talao, there is a raised central platform accessible by a small bridge. This platform was used for cultural events. Talao was fed by a complex system of underground water channels ensuring a constant supply of water. The Khwabga, also known as Private Chamber or Dream Palace, is situated at a secluded corner of the palace complex away from the public areas. This location ensures the emperor's privacy. It was designed as a palace of solitude and retreat where Akbar could relax, reflect and spend time in privacy. The interiors of the Khwabga are adorned with delicate frescoes, ornate carvings and fine marble latticework showcasing artistic skills of Mughal craftsmen. The home of Akbar's mother, Hamida Babu Begum, the Golden House, takes its name from the profuse use of that colour in both interior and exterior decorations. It was also known as Mariam Makan. The interiors of the building contains beautiful paintings depicting elephant fights, hunting and scenes of battles and tournaments. Ahead of a golden house, there is a palace dedicated to Raja Birbal, one of the Akbar's nine trusted ministers and advisors. Birbal was known for his intelligence, wit and wisdom and he held a prominent position in Mughal court. Birbal's palace provides insights into the life and times of Birbal, one of the Akbar's Navratnas and his contributions to the Mughal Empire. Towards the end, there is an important structure known as Divan Yam, also known as Hall of Public Audience. It's a place where Emperor Akbar could meet and address the general public, listen to their grievances and hold public audiences. The hall was designed to be easily accessible to common people and was an important component of Akbar's policy of promoting accessibility and justice. As we bring our journey through Fatehpur Sikri to a close, one can't help but captivated by the endearing allure of this historical gem. This city, frozen in time, echoes with the footsteps of emperors and whispers of queens. It's a place where architecture tells stories where stone breathes history. But Fatehpur Sikri isn't just about a grand structure and intricate designs. It's about the people who lived and thrived here. It's about the emperors who walked these courtyards and queens who graced these palaces. It's about the artisans who meticulously carved every stone and visionary who conceived this grand city. Thanks a ton guys for joining us on this unforgettable journey through Fatehpur Sikri. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to support us on our mission to educate people about the architecture marvels of our incredible India. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning and keep spreading the beauty of our shared heritage. This is Swapnil and Sumi signing off from Fatehpur Sikri. Bye-bye.